In this video, we're going to focus on the Krebs cycle. So just to review, glycolysis is a process that splits glucose into two pyruvate molecules. Now following pyruvate oxidation, that's when pyruvate is oxidized to acetyl coenzyme A, acetyl coenzyme A enters the Krebs cycle where it reacts with oxaloacetate to produce citrate. The enzyme that catalyzes that reaction is citrate synthesase. It synthesizes citrate from this four carbon molecule, oxaloacetate, and the two carbon acetyl part of acetyl coenzyme A. So we get a six carbon molecule. Now, another enzyme that I would like to focus on is the dehydrogenase enzyme. Notice what this enzyme does. It removes hydrogen from molecules. Let's focus on step five. Starting with isocitrate, notice the number of hydrogen atoms that it has. So we have one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, if we look at alpha ketoglutarate, we can see that it has one, three, five, six hydrogen atoms. So whenever you see the enzyme dehydrogenase, it typically removes hydrogen from a molecule. NAD plus then picks up those hydrogen ions as well as electrons, reducing into NADH. Now, whenever there's a reduction reaction, there is an oxidation reaction. Isocitrate has six carbon atoms and alpha ketoglutarate has five carbon atoms. Notice that we lost a carbon in the form of CO2. So step five was a decarboxylation reaction. We lost carbon dioxide. A decarboxylation reaction is an oxidation reaction, which involves the loss of electrons. NAD plus picked up two electrons and a hydrogen ion, turn it into NADH. So NAD plus is reduced to NADH because it received electrons, while isocitrate was oxidized to alpha ketoglutarate because it lost electrons. So keep that in mind. Oxidation involves a loss of electrons. Reduction involves a gain of electrons. In step six, we have the use of a dehydrogenase enzyme. This is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. And we're going to take away hydrogen from alpha ketoglutarate to make sustenyl coenzyme A. So we have a total of six hydrogen atoms there. In sustenyl coenzyme A, there's five. So we lost a hydrogen, and that was transferred to NAD plus to make NADH. We also got another CO2 molecule, so that's also a decarboxylation step. So the two carbon atoms in the acetyl part of acetyl coenzyme A were converted into carbon dioxide because that's the net result of cellular respiration, converting glucose into carbon dioxide and water. Now in step seven, as sustenyl coenzyme A converts into sustenate, we see that a GDP molecule is converted to GTP. Now, GTP converts back into GDP, and in that process, it's not shown in this diagram, but ADP will pick up the phosphate group from GTP, turning into ATP. So we get one molecule of ATP in step seven. This part is a cyclic process. We use up GDP to make GTP, and then GTP transfers the phosphate group to ADP to make ATP. In step eight, we have another dehydrogenase enzyme, which means that we're going to remove hydrogen from sustenate to make fumarate. So sustenate has six hydrogen atoms, fumarate has four, and we can see that those two hydrogen atoms were transferred to FAD. Anytime you transfer hydrogen atoms to a molecule, you're reducing that molecule. So FAD was reduced to FADH2 and sustenate was oxidized to fumarate. Now let's summarize the Krebs cycle. So pyruvate has three carbon atoms. 
In the first step, it loses a carbon in the form of CO2, but that's pyruvate oxidation. But once we start with the Krebs cycle, that is once acetylcholenzyme A enters it, those two carbon atoms are converted into two molecules of CO2. And notice that we get a total of three NADH molecules. So one turn of the cycle produces three NADH molecules. We also get one FADH2. And we get one molecule of ATP. So that's for one turn of the Krebs cycle. Now, glucose will generate two pyruvate molecules, which turns into two acetylcoenzyme A molecules. So one glucose molecule is equivalent to two turns of the cell, I mean, of the Krebs cycle. So one glucose molecule will yield six NADH molecules, two FADH2 molecules, and two ATP. So that's the net result of the Krebs cycle for one molecule of glucose. You get six NADH, two FADH2, and two ATP molecules. So just keep that in mind. Now, out of the six carbon atoms that are in glucose, two of them are lost in pyruvate oxidation. Each pyruvate loses one CO2 molecule, so glucose loses two CO2 molecules during this step, pyruvate oxidation. The other four CO2 molecules are lost during the two turns of the Krebs cycle. So to review, the Krebs cycle is a cyclic process by which acetylcoenzyme A, the acetyl part, those two carbon atoms are oxidized into CO2. And during the oxidation process, electrons are stripped from the acetyl group and transferred to molecules such as NAD plus and FAD to produce NADH and FADH2, which will later go into the electron transport chain to make even more ATP molecules. So that's the basic idea behind the Krebs cycle. We're just oxidizing the acetyl group into carbon dioxide, producing these high energy electron carriers.